Well, friends, I say we give it a little juice. Well, she is officially almost empty. A couple rods, some lures left in here. We're gonna hook her up. This is gonna be a quick exchange, everybody. Welcome on back to the channel. It's time to swap it out. Getting the new silver bullet. It's something I look forward to every year. As you guys know, I work with Fun and Son. They are a marine dealer here in the DFW area. I actually got one of my first boats from them. I think this is gonna be my fifth or sixth boat from Fun and Son. So I've had a lot of boats. I've had way more boats than I have trucks in my lifetime. We're here at Fun and Sun. Now it's time to say the magic words. New boat, I hope you float. Boom! The Phoenix has risen. There it is. The all new 2022. this morning y'all the silver bullet has finally made it to the driveway here at the treehouse so I cannot wait to get this thing out of the water but when I took it uh, when I got brought it home it just turned into a complete crummy weather situation we had snow or sleet we had freezing rain it's like 33 degrees right now it's chilly so I'm waiting for the frost to literally get off the boat cover and I'm gonna take it off we're gonna explore this thing and we gotta take it out to the water, break that motor in. Just play with these new toys, y'all. We got new transducers, new graphs, uh, there's new things on the inside. Just got her about halfway full at the pump, and well, that was painful. I remember the days when I was guiding back in like 2008, 2009 and gas, it was ridiculous. It was, uh, it was over $4 a gallon and all the guides had to raise their, their rates, their prices uh, by like 50 bucks because it just costs so much to fill up the boats and you're running all that every day. It's just, looks like we're buckling in for another spat of that juiciness so yay on the bright side however it is almost 60 degrees and we have low winds what a beautiful day to take the boat out on the lake <laughs> Here at the ramp, now let's get a clean look at this bad girl right here. Now as far as the hull goes, you guys probably can't even tell the difference between my last boat and this one. There's a slight change. I had a um, flat gray. This one's just white and it's got that real sparkly silver in there. It's the Phoenix 921 Elite. That's the top of the line Phoenix boat. And same Mercury motor. Got the exact same thing. Even decaled the same guys at fun and son they've got a guy that uh, will custom decal your motor to match your boat and I think Burke has a little bit more customization I could be wrong but anyway this is kind of that that stealthy look it doesn't have the uh, classic red and uh, bright white colors of the the typical mercury it's just kind of gray subtle blends in with the silver bullet perfectly I've run Yamaha's most of my life but I have come to like the Mercury's, uh, in particular the Pro XS. Haven't had a single issue with this, uh, with running two of these on uh, the four strokes. They are very loud. They get attention when you crank them up. They sound really dirty, uh, but I haven't had a single problem with them. You know, they have a really heavy prop shaft on them, which is great too. I did, I did ding one, um, trying to get up on pad on, on fork on the last uh, boat, but that was that was my fault and those things happen. Moving on, let's go to the Raptors. So we've got, we're switching up from Power Pole to the Minn Kota Raptors. 
Now, one thing that's pretty cool about me working with Fun and Son is they usually rig these boats out the way everyone wants them uh, for resale because I turn these boats in every year. So I do have a little bit of say in what I want on the boat, for, but for the most part, I like to just run whatever the most popular thing is and it makes it easy for them to sell the boats. Um, and I ended up trying new brands and, and seeing which things I like and don't like about all of them. So it's, it works out really good. So switching up to the Minn Kota Raptors this year, I already got these synced. It was very easy to do. I said that. Yeah, there they go. We're popping down. Down and up. So I got two remote systems. They are easy to operate. I like that so far. And st sticking with that Humminbird Johnson Outdoors uh, brand here, no affiliation. Again, this is just what uh, they rigged up on the boat, but this is a Helix 15. So it's uh, bigger than my Garmin. I had a 12 inch, but I really like the Garmin. I'll be honest, I, it was my first time running it. First season running a Garmin as the, the main graph really came to like it. I like the, the quickness of it. Very very fast when we're trying to get to things there's no loading the hummingbirds have have loading it does have the mega imaging though so we got the transducer to do all the mega imaging mega imaging is good i've i've been on a few boats that have it i am impressed with uh the clarity of it so that's good and then up front we also have a helix but what's different on this year's boat probably the biggest difference is we are running that garmin live scope baby yeah, we got to do that. So I have, uh, I have the Echo Map, and I also have another Helix up here. So I'll do the the mapping and the 360. That's the other thing that's different right here. And then I'll do the live scope. I I was hoping this one would have the live scope plus transducer. It doesn't. I'm probably going to switch that out, or I'm going to add an additional transducer and run a side pole mount. I really want to do that. 360 I have never used before guys this is going to be completely new you have to have a special extra mounting bracket to run that 360 um, this thing's kind of a pain though you got to take this off to put the cover on the boat which I always cover my boat uh, when it's at home so you have to basically unscrew these things lay it on the front deck uh, to be able to put the cover on which is a pain in the butt but uh, there, is a, there is a company that makes a quick release mount for this. I'll probably end up getting one of those. Oh, and let's, let's not forget this big change. The Minn Kota Ultrax. I've run a few Ultrax. I love them. Um, I, just, I like the spot lock better than on the Garmin. Maybe I didn't have my Garmin tuned right, but I just I had much better luck with the pedal. I did not like that Garmin pedal. Um, I, I've liked the, the Minn Kota pedals quite a bit. So went back to that. That was one thing that I requested. I said, I don't care what else you do with the boat. Just give me a Minn Kota trolling motor with spot lock. We have a little bit more offset on the jack plate uh, than, than the last boat. So we'll see how the performance goes on that. But, uh, oh, here's another thing on the internal side of things. That's kind of a big deal. So we put these out way more room on the inside now with battery space and that's because I'm only running four batteries the last boat had five batteries and that was basically to run electronics and the motor off of those two um, those two batteries you have, you've got your three trolling motor batteries now I just have this one and I've got the uh, the power pole uh, the sea monster charging system with this big eight gauge uh, wire and what that allows you to do is basically power up everything with the motor uh, it, They run bigger gauge wires and it's just a lot more efficient. It doesn't pull as much power and you're charging your trolling motor battery batteries at the same time So that works out awesome for me. I love to do truck camping and sometimes places I can't don't have uh, charging stations so I'll be able to camp kind of remotely get you know at least two days probably three days out of the the battery life with the trolling motor and keep on dangling <laughs> Turn on the electronics. Oh, 
uh, Blake, uh, one of the guys that works at Fun and Sun, he kind of already dialed some things in here for me to, to save me a lot of time and transferred all of my waypoints, uh, which going from Garmin to Hummingbird, it's a big mess. So thank you, Blake, for doing that. Well, Hummingbird, just not as crisp on the on the 2D as the Garmin. <laughs> good y'all I ran it about three four thousand rpms for about eight minutes shut it down in a cove just wanted to see what the water temp was and I've never used the 360 so it's time to turn on these graphs and figure this thing out preparing the pod it says so this is my first look at 360 maybe it's some of yours first look and we got the live scope running right now, which, you know, to me, I haven't learned the 360 yet, but live scope I know. And it's pretty apparent. I mean, you're literally looking live when you see a fish. It's instant. This is actually not instant. It, it's got a little bit of a delay. It's like a radar. So it goes around and it'll get those images and it'll refresh when that line ticks back. I mean, I've done, I'm not completely sure what I am looking at yet how far is this thing going out I need I need some numbers here like the o'clocks where's high noon where do I know I need to cast pinging contrast range color isolate sweep area display display speed okay here we go we're just going to crank that up. Oh, wait, she's getting a little blurry here. Front. Okay, so we can just go with the front view here. Uh, I like that a little better. I mean, you're basically looking 180. I can just hear all sorts of pinging going on in the water. I can only imagine what this feels like for the fish in shallow water. It's just like a, a rapid fire of ticks and clicks going through the water so uh, all right let's uh let's take the raptors up hmm? little raptor up action i should have both of these connected yes yes that is working trolling motor engage maybe not we're not, we're not engaging all right, now we're engaging. I actually have a, a another switch in the back that controls the power uh, for that trolling motor. Very hard thump. Set the hook and the uh, line broke. Uh, not a good way to start off with a new boat. Break off. I was thinking to myself, I was like, this is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch like a 10 right here. First, first fish in the new boat. So just had my second bite on the uh, on the Junior Mondo on the Shaky. I think that time I just didn't set the hook hard enough because I was kind of scared. 
got all chomped up with it. But um, I'm going to fish here for a minute. I'm sitting in between two spawning creeks. So I just want to show you guys the 360. Because I've been playing around with it for about an hour now. I like it. I, I do like it. Um, and I have been able to see quite a few fish on it. But and, uh, there's, there's the old boy right there on live scope. See when that's moving around, we lose picture, lose sight of the, the fish or the structure or whatever it is. Man, there's fish crawling around this point. Movement. Love to see it. But this keeps a solid picture. So the 360 um, puck just it doesn't move. So you get to, to keep the the picture on, on your screen and know if the fish are moving. So every time it rotates, you'll see if the fish are moving or the rock that you're looking at, if it's you know a little bit over here or whatever. But I love the cat the shadows that it casts on the on the rocks so you can see. Uh, the good types of cover. I've seen uh, seen some submerged cables, um, other types of cover on here. It shows up pretty well. I took it down to about 40 feet, so it's a real nice little picture. Let's see if I can bump that up just a hair. Just a hair. Let's see what's going on all the way out here. Oh, 50 feet. Love having that Minn Kota spot lock back smooth like butter. And having this 360 is gonna be cool. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I can't imagine offshore this summer. Ooh, it's gonna get real nasty, real nasty. All right, fishing freaks. When in doubt, you gotta break that bandito bug out. It is the drug that gets the tugs. Mm-hmm. Green pumpkin, that's never caught anything. Would be a crime not to stock a new boat without bandito bugs. And when I went to the classic, I actually asked a lot of you what your favorite bait to throw was. And I think half of you said bandito bug. It's understandable. But studies have shown that it definitely works. So I really don't like the way that is. I don't like that shaky head. We have got it there, but <sighs> hookup ratio doesn't feel good. If I lose another one, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quit fishing. Oh god, got the first first drip on the side first little drip of dip and glow wiped it though i love the layout on the phoenix see they got these two extra little little boxes here for those little trinkets that bait just says eat me eat me now what a bait what a bait There's a bite. Got it. Yes. When in doubt, get that bug out. <laughs> there we go. That is a smallmouth. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Holy cow, I got a smallmouth. The first, <laughs> these aren't incredibly plentiful in here, so that is awesome. My first fish in the new silver bullet is a smallmouth. That was probably why I missed that other one. Just couldn't quite, couldn't quite get that whole worm in there. That is cool, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the first official sniff in the silver bullet. Oh, your little small mouth lips are so smooth. Mmm, love you so much. See ya. That was fun. Good fight.
Oh yeah. like that friends we have broken in well pretty much broken in still got a little bit more to do on the motor but we have uh we've caught our first fish got a small mouth to start out the silver bullet was not expecting that and i've got to try out all the new gizmos and gadgets love the 360 i think i'm gonna have so much fun with that um come really really post spawn but you know now that i'm thinking about it just sitting there and like spawn type areas watching fish move in around you that's pretty cool so one thing i need to make sure to do is turn off this power system i've got two switches so every time that I get off the water make sure to turn these off and that way we don't have any incidents with power um, if you do have the ability to turn those off, I recommend it because I watched a guy one time, his remote control went off on his uh, power poles going down the road, and that did not end well. A lot of fiberglass around the streets. She's pretty mirror finish right now. I can see myself in there. Beautiful. So in the comments what would you add to this boat or change you know electronics trolling motor accessories whatever let me know in the comments what what you'd prefer on your ultimate bass boat but i would say this is getting pretty much as ultimate as i can think of the only thing that i'm going to add is i'm going to add some sort of mount right here where i can have another uh, telescoping rotating pole with maybe another transducer on here or maybe just swap them out um, for when I'm crappie fishing or if I want to just directly target a brush pile use the spot lock and then keep that transducer on uh, the target so that's the only thing that I know that I'm gonna add anything else let me know in the comments and one more thing I'd like to add before we go I just got notice that the Blazing worms are back in stock on the website guggensquad.com and you can use code LFG to save 10% on that and the entire site and our spring line, all of our spring line of um, our performance gear, performance wear, that is coming out very, very soon as well. So um, we have a bunch of new patterns. You're, you're, the wives and girlfriends are going to love this one. And they may even want to wear it themselves. I mean, we've got some really cool spring colors, different designs, stuff you guys have never seen before on fishing gear. So it's it's really premium stuff, and I know you're going to love it. So, again, you can save on the website using my code or just use whatever, Guggen code. I, I don't care. Just save yourself some money using one of the codes on GuggenSquad.com. And thank you guys for, I think this is my fifth new boat reveal tour. There's been quite a few of them. Been very blessed over the years to have some awesome vessels. So thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you in the great outdoors. Go snatch some big old helmets. And I'll see you on the next one.